may be seated. Today we continue our journey to the cross. Jesus journeyed with compassion. Last week we talked about Jesus' journey with confidence, how he knew who he was and what he had come to do, and so he journeyed with confidence toward the cross. Today he journeys and invites us to journey with compassion. You don't have to raise a hand, but how many of you are people watchers? People watchers, do you sometimes like to go places like the mall and sit and just watch people? Just for your own little entertainment, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know, maybe you watch mannerisms, maybe you watch how they're dressed, maybe you watch whatever, their interactions, but you just kind of sit back and watch. People watchers. You know, um, some of you have lived in Clearfield all of your life, but when you go to someplace new, you just want to kind of like look at that place through that set of new eyes. You don't look as intently when you're driving down for the front street in Clearfield as if you are in downtown Pittsburgh, unless you go to downtown Pittsburgh all the time. If you go to downtown Pittsburgh, and you know, I've never lived in the inner city or in the middle of a city, so my eyes are wide open. I want to take it all in. I go to New York to where Broadway is, you know, down, down in the, the, the middle there, you know. I'm just I, I'm watching people, maybe, but it's usually those big screens. We don't have all those big screens around around here, you know. But you know, as you get more comfortable with a place, maybe you go there often enough, maybe you're not looking at the big screens. Maybe your eyes catch something new, something different. The more familiar you come with a place, the you you see things maybe that other people, you know, first-timers don't see. But then once you get totally familiar with a place, like I've been in Clearfield for X number of years, and then it's like things become invisible. You know, first it's like gaining vision, gaining vision, seeing more and more, but then all of a sudden you hit this point where it becomes commonplace, and you just don't see anymore. Things become invisible to you. My main question for us today is this. What do you see when you go through our town, our community, and those surrounding areas? What do you see? In our passage of Matthew 9, Jesus goes for walks, of course. That was the only mode of transportation in that point of time. And there weren't newspapers and so forth. So what he did to gain a knowledge to see what was happening around was he went. He went. Jesus went. Those are our first two words in Matthew 9, verse 35. Jesus went. He went through all the towns and all the villages. It reiterates what was said in Matthew 4, verse 23. Jesus went. Jesus went. He went throughout all of Galilee, it said in chapter 4. Through all of Galilee, and he went through more and more of the towns and of the places. Jesus went. He went looking. He went to take in and to see the people, and he saw the people being harassed. That means they needed a leader, and he wanted to be that leader for them. But Jesus went. The second thing that Jesus did was he went teaching, and he went preaching, and he went healing. He went into those towns and villages to bring them the good news of the gospel and to minister to them. We call that kind of the threefold ministry of Jesus, teaching, preaching, and healing. And he healed not only just, you know, uh, the physical bodies, but he went to offer forgiveness of sins. He went to offer deliverance to, to them. His ministry was about the whole mind, body, spirit. Um, with Jesus. You know, when I look at the Gospels, when I look at Jesus beginning his ministry, which we kind of talked about last week, it was just going to begin, and then I look at the summation of his ministry. You know, if you were that people watcher, and you sat before the Bible, and you took in all of Jesus' ministry, what would you see? What's the, your mind's image of who Jesus is and how he lived out his days on this earth? This is what I see. I see Jesus sitting at the well in Samaria 
a foreign land, talking to a Samaritan woman. I see Jesus on a hillside teaching, the crowds sitting on the lawn in front of him. I see Jesus noticing Zacchaeus in a tree. Nobody else sees him, but Jesus does. I see Jesus extending a hand of grace and forgiveness to a woman about to be stoned to death. I see Jesus with children sitting on his lap, touching their heads, blessing them. I see Jesus weary, tired, going to another region so that he can gain some rest. But the crowds follow. They press in because they are hungry for more. I see Jesus noticing a, as a woman has touched him in the midst of a crowd, and she's been healed, but he doesn't ignore that fact. He doesn't let her slip quietly away. He speaks, asking who, giving her voice. I see Jesus talking with Nicodemus at night. I see Jesus eating with sinners and eating with religious people, too. I see Jesus healing the paralyzed. I see Jesus restoring the sight to the blind. I see Jesus raising the dead. I see Jesus letting Lazarus die so he can teach an even greater lesson. I see Jesus delivering a man tormented by demons. I see Jesus walking patiently, living strategically for three years, three years as he journeys toward the cross. Jesus teaching, preaching, and healing. What do you see in our community? What do you see? The third thing in this passage is Jesus goes throughout the cities and towns and teaches, preaches, heals. It says of Jesus that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Jesus had compassion. Compassion. What is compassion? You know, I looked up the, def the dictionary definition of compassion, and I didn't like it very much, but I'm going to share it with you anyhow. Compassion. Compassion is defined as a noun, first of all, which is my first disagreement. I'm going to move from there in a minute, but it's defined as a noun, and these are the definitions. A sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes for others. That's a good starting place. Good starting place. Some of the synony synonyms are pity, and most of us, I think the the problem I have with compassion, I think compassion is a good thing to share, but most of us, if someone has pity on us, we don't want any pity, okay? So that's my first problem. But synonyms, pity, sympathy, empathy, fellow feeling, care, concern, solicitude, sensitivity, warmth, love, tenderness, mercy, leniency, tolerance, kindness, humanity, and charity. Some of those border on just where we're going, and some of those, uh, I don't know. The sentence they gave in the dictionary, you know, they always kind of teach you how to use it. The sentence they gave is this, the victims should be treated with compassion. The victims should be treated with compassion. You know, and that, even though they said compassion is a noun, it's not used, I don't think, as a noun there. I don't see it used as a noun. Compassion is describing how to treat somebody. I think that's an adverb, isn't it? It's how to treat somebody with compassion. You know, for us in the church, compassion propels us to action. I am going to argue today that compassion is a verb. Yes, it may start with a feeling, but it moves us to action. It moved Jesus. It propelled Jesus to action. Richard L. Thulin said this, Compassion is activity. Compassion does something. It is not primarily a feeling, even though feelings are involved. It is not a sense of pity or of pain or of sorrow to say, I feel sorry for that person, or I am distressed over this situation, it is not yet compassion. 
To suffer indigestion over the plight of the world's hungry is not yet compassion. Even to cry ourselves to sleep at night over the suffering of another is not yet compassion. Compassion acts. It walks through, quote-unquote, all the towns and villages. Compassion walks. Compassion puts on feet and goes. Compassion calls, he says. And lastly, compassion also sends. Compassion sends you and I into the world, into our little town of Clearfield to see what we can see and to be moved with compassion as Jesus was moved with compassion. You know, I read this in Matthew, and um, you know, a lot of times we read, in Matthew, we, we read a chapter, and this is the very end of chapter 9, and we stop there because there's a chapter division. But you know, this carries into chapter 10. You know what happened in chapter 10? In chapter 10, you know, this ends with, you know, Jesus, you know, what he was doing, and and Jesus was moved with compassion, and there not being enough workers, that there need to be more people that help. And in chapter 10, you know what Jesus did? He called the 12 disciples, and he sent them forth. He said, you go forward, you take authority, you heal people, and you do ministry just like I've been doing it. You go and do the same. You know, right away, being in the Gospel of Matthew, my mind went to Matthew 28, to the Great Commission, where we are all sent forward. As Jesus left this earth, he sent us all forth to go and make disciples, to baptize them, to teach them, to obey the teachings of Jesus Christ. And you know what I discovered as I was reading? You know, that's the Great Commission. Well, this Thulin guy, I think it was, called this the Little Commission. It was the predecessor. It was, again, that teaching point that as Jesus sent those 12 disciples, trained them to go out, he was going to do the same for all of us. It was the little commission, and now we live in the great commission. We are all sent. We are all called. We are all to be people watchers, to go out into our towns and into our communities and to see to see through the eyes of Jesus Christ, to walk or drive, or whatever, to read our newspaper, we see, we see our community. And yes, we are moved to compassion, no, not just a feeling, but we are propelled to act on the behalf of others, because Jesus Christ loves, and his love and compassion together act on the behalf of others. What do you see? What do you see? In an article entitled, Compassion is a Choice, it describes compassion as people passionate to be someone to someone. To be passionate to be someone to someone. So, you know, you can't feed every child in Africa but you can feed one. You know, we can't help every homeless person, but we can help one. We can't support every missionary, but we can help one. We can send one. You can't encourage every single youth, but you can encourage one. You can't visit every homebound person, but you can visit one. You can call one. At work, at school, to see, to really see, is to risk really stepping out. You see someone, you know something's wrong, everybody knows something's wrong, and maybe everybody's talking about it, but will you be the one person who approaches that person and says, Hi, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Will you be that person that goes from compassion as a noun, as a feeling, to compassion as action, as a verb? You know, Peter's description of Jesus in 
the book of Acts, is Jesus went about doing good. Jesus went about doing good. His daily life, as he walked through life, because of the compassion, he expressed that by doing good. We sang a hymn that I don't know if you know very well, but Jesus' hands were kind hands. I think it's based on that passage. Jesus went about doing good. I read the Girl Scout promise this morning in our bulletin, and I listened to it again. Our Girl Scouts promise to serve God and country to help people at all times to go about doing good. So as you go through your week this week, what will you see as you walk, as you drive through town? What do you see? To what or whom are you being sent by God? Will you be someone to someone? Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus Christ and for how he lived his life, how he went about doing good, how he saw, how he noticed, how he reached out and touched, how he noticed and didn't ignore, but called out. Lord, I pray that you would give us that same confidence as we move through life. That those things that maybe pang at our hearts or at least draw our attention, Lord, that we too would be moved with compassion and we would take that step to open up a conversation, to touch a life, that we too would do, move about doing good doing good. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your great love for us. And Lord, if there is someone in this place who is in need of your compassion, may we express that compassion to one another. May we truly be the body of Christ. May we not just sit beside each other in this place, but Lord, may you continue to build relationships, to build friendships.